Hello folks and a very warm welcome back to my channel. Um, it's now mid-September and summer's gradually giving way to the autumn, albeit we've had a blindingly hot start to, uh, to September so far. But the um, nights are having a nice little bit of chill to them, which I like. And more importantly, it's kind of getting dark by eight-ish. So by nine, it's um, okay to start imaging, which is good for me. And so at this time of year, I kind of turn my attention away from the summer objects and more to the um, autumnal objects. And so today I've decided to um, pop out. It's uh, nice and clear and there's no real moon around at the moment or there won't be until like midnight. Uh, so yes, I'm going to attempt to image for the first time for several years the, um, the Heart Nebula. My name's John and I make videos on camping, walking and astronomy. If you like what you see in this video then please check my channel out as you may find others that interest you there. But in the meantime, let's crack on with this video. So the Heart Nebula is a, a quite a large reddish object uh, that sits in between the constellations of Cassiopeia and Perseus. And it's about four times the size of the moon, I think. Um, it's an emission nebula. Uh, where the uh, red gases are um, excited by the solar wind being given off by a star cluster in the middle of it. Uh, this star cluster, I think, has a bunch of stars that are about 50 times the size of the sun in it and loads of smaller stars as well. Now, up to now, I haven't really had a, a, a lot of success with it. Um, I tried a few years ago uh, and it was a bit of a dismal failure really. And then I tried again and that was a little bit better, but not massively so. Uh, but in, in these images, I was attempting to use an Altaz mount where I could only get exposures of something like 10 or 15 seconds. And that's not really enough to get the faint parts of the heart nebula to come out. So I just randomly, a year or so ago, tried taking a, a picture of the constellation of Cassiopeia just using a DSLR and I think a 50 millimeter lens. And this was kind of so wide view that within that same picture, I was quite pleased obviously to get the, the Cassiopeia constellation, but also um, the Andromeda galaxy, which sits off to one side of Cassiopeia. The, Perseus double cluster, which sits just below it. And just to the left of the Perseus double cluster is the Heart Nebula. And sitting immediately below that is the Sol Nebula. And I did this on a star adventure amount. So I was able to take quite long exposures, probably three or four minutes, and quite easily picked up the, the red nebulosity of the Heart Nebula and the, and the Sol Nebula. So this gave me the encouragement really to to try again and um, it's only taken me about a year to get around to, <laughs> to doing it but um, that's the plan tonight and I shall be using my uh, Redcat 51 scope which is a, a nice wide field scope and lends itself very much to something like the Heart Nebula. I did look to see if I could squeeze the Heart and the Soul Nebula in within the same field of view and it's not really possible. Um, but that might be a future project with my Ascar FMA 135 scope. So today I'm going to focus on the Heart Nebula anyway and um, hope to get an improvement on, uh, on previous years because I'll be able to start shooting around nine o'clock uh, maybe I'll get two and a half, three hours in uh, before I want to knock it on the head and, and go to bed. I'd, I'd ideally like to be in bed around midnight. But anyway, um, it's getting dark now. So uh, let's get the kit outside and get cracking. You're like a ring. In the dark, you stand me right, you lit the spark, and I can feel you tearing down every 
Folks, well, a few days have passed and the results are in. And um, yeah, I'm very pleased to say that the uh, effort was a, a significant improvement over the earlier pictures that I put up. So I'm very pleased about that. Um, in the end, I did about two and a half hours worth of 90 second exposures. Uh, and that got me to around sort of half 11, quarter to 12, so I called it a day and, and went to bed. Um, I knew from the off that the results were likely to be okay because a, a single exposure, just to say, showed the heart shape of the, the heart nebula. <clears throat> now, I knew I was on the, the right target because there are two uh, kind of brightish bits of the, uh, of the heart nebula. One is around the central star cluster which you could see <clears throat> and um, the other is at the, the kind of tip of, of the heart there's a quite a bright bit of nebulosity that I think has got its own name I think it's the fish head nebula or something um, so I knew I was sort of on target and, and was going to get hopefully a half decent result out of it um, yeah so I'll put that picture up in a minute now of course Although I say you shouldn't do this, you always compare your image with uh, with everybody else's. And there's um, lots of images that show a great deal more detail than, than mine does. But for me, in order to get that, I'd have to do six, seven, eight hours worth of exposures, I reckon. And realistically, I'm not going to sit up all night. So the only way I'm going to achieve that kind of, of result is to do multiple nights on the same object, which a little bit of food for thought for me, really. I might um, contemplate doing something like that uh, as one of my kind of improvement targets for next year. But um, but anyway, like I often say, you shouldn't compare yourself too much with others. You only compare yourself with what you've done previously and hope to see a, a little bit of improvement. And uh, in this case, I think I'm safe in saying that that has occurred. So uh, I'll put the picture up now. I hope you like it and I'll see you next time. Take care. <laughs>